Hey everyone, Michael Crump here. And today I want to go over Syscon for the PlayStation 3. Today I want to focus on just the software part. If you haven't checked out the hardware part and what's required in order to get it connected to your PlayStation 3, then check out this other video. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and let's jump straight into it. Uh, the one thing I will note here is, is that you should have at least downloaded uh, a link provided below. Um, and again, this download link and the person that put all this together, um, I will display their name somewhere or maybe in the description. Uh, credits to them, not to me for creating this package. Okay, so once you've downloaded that file, what you're going to have is the following. So you're going to have a bunch of new directories as well as a couple of different tutorials. For the most part, you're not going to need a lot of these. So I go up here to the very top and I type in command and now I've got a command prompt. The reason I'm showing you starting from here is, is that first off, you will need to ensure that you've got Python installed on your system. Actually, Python 2. Uh, you can go to the Python website and download it, and it should be good and set up on your system. Um, once it's set up, if you do come in here and you decide to go ahead and try to run one of these things, here's what you're going to get. So we'll do our Python. We're going to type in the PS syscon to the script that we need to run. So keep in mind, we do need to run this script on our local computer in order to get this to read. And then it's asking for a port. We're going to talk about that in just a second. And uh, you don't have to worry right now at the moment for what does the SW mean. Okay, so if you run this, there is something that you may see here and it says cannot import the crypto.cipher. Um, this basically is just telling us that we need to import a package that Python will use in order to be able to read the diagnostic codes. So all you'll need to do is type in pip pip install and then py crypto dome and then hit enter. Um, it will take a few moments to download the required packages and you're going to see a few errors that pop up here. Okay, so we get a few warnings on the Python 2.7 region its end of life. That's okay. This was originally designed for Python 2. Uh, it still will continue to run. Once that one is done, you'll see here that it says you need to install pip install pi serial. So it's going to use a serial port in order to connect up. So go ahead and make sure that you type in this pip install pi serial. Once you do that, you're going to see exactly the same sort of thing here. It's going to say, hey, you successfully installed it. And again, a few different types of warning messages here that don't necessarily mean very much to us. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to type in a device manager here. So I'm going to bring up the device manager, give it a second or two. And so at this point, it's very important to note that I have plugged my UART chip via USB cable into my computer. So the reason I'm calling this out right now is, is that in order for this script and other scripts to understand which device they have connected to it, you'll need to make sure that you install some of the drivers. Um, so here I opened up Device Manager, and there is a little exclamation point here where it's saying, hey, I don't know what exactly is this USB UART chip uh, that is located in here. So you're going to need to come in. You're going to need to select it. And I would just go up to Update Driver. Um, inside of that package that I talked about a little bit earlier, the root of that drivers folder and then go ahead and hit OK and then next 
and you should see it going through saying, hey, it's updated it, and now there's a USB serial converter. Now, if it comes back and it looks just like this again, um, you may see it looking like this. There's no drivers installed uh, for it. Um, I basically went back and I hit the same button again and ran it through and it worked. Um, I'm not so certain that that's going to happen on your computer, but if it does, just try it again. And when you see this screen, which is the USB serial port COM5, that is telling you, number one, which COM ports you're going to specify in the command line, but also it's going to tell you that there is no other issues with it. So there's no little warning messages or anything like that or warning icons. Okay, back to our command prompt. We will go ahead and we'll type in our Python again. Now um, I am using CXR and it's dependent on which type of machine that you're using. But once you type that in there, you may start getting a couple of these um, SC open response invalid. Um, so before I go into that, the first thing I do want to say is that there is an uh, there is a couple of alternative GUI based uh, systems that you can use. So this is one of those systems. Uh, you can go and download this. This is a Syscon reader, and they call this the V4 installer. So I'm just going to walk you through this one really quick. So we're going to uh, extract that file. We're going to head on over to the executable. We're going to double click on that and open this on up. And here we're going to leave all the defaults because it really doesn't matter. Um, once that is complete, there is a folder here and we're going to go to the executable, uh, syscon reader under, actually where I think we're going to take syscon reader dot executable. And we're going to open this up. So now once this opens, you're going to have a bit of a GUI related option. So you can pick the COM port here. We knew that ours was five. Uh, and it says it pick either CXR or SW depending on consoles. I'll have some documentation linked to this that will describe on which one you should pick for your console. And then there's the button down here at the bottom that's going to be to go ahead and start that. Now, keep in mind, this is just another GUI program that's basically doing the same thing that we saw just a second ago. It does make it a little bit easier in case you're not familiar with the command line or maybe navigating out to the different types of scripts, um, but this is just an option. So once you connect, or you feel like you may connect, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you type in these words auth. Now, I would, where it says COM5 and then there is an SW, you can alternate between the two different options here in this on this screen. Now, the reason that um, I say alternate is a bit because sometimes you may get all these auth response and valid codes when you really just needed to toggle that or find your right COM port. I believe I eventually got a solid auth from this. Okay, so I finally got a valid auth. Keep in mind, you need to do this multiple times. You need to run this AUTH multiple times. Um, I've never really, at least in my time working with this, I've never been able to get the auth codes to work um, immediately. So that auth just sends that authorization token that basically you are Sony and that you have the right to be able to see and view those error diagnostic codes in order to understand what is wrong with your console. So the error codes that I'm showing here is they're all listed at 22110. Later on, after a bit of digging, I have found out that this could be something in relating to the graphics chip or the motherboard. More than likely, the board is going to be bad itself. So not something entirely fixable, but, uh, but definitely good to be able to see that versus me spending time trying to open up a power 
you know, trying a different power supply, etc. Um, so here is my log. So I did an auth auth and then finally got in. I typed in that lowercase e r r l o g. Uh, with that, that's where it started coming back and giving me my error codes. Now I believe it keeps like maybe like the last twenty or so in here. So as you take a look through all of these, um, the last twenty times or so that I've booted this console up, I have received that a zero zero two two one one zero. Now there's a GitHub site that you can go to that will help you understand those codes. There's obviously forums uh, and things of that nature. Um, one other quick command that you may want to check out is just this version command. So I typed in version and it says Sherwood version, and then it gives me the number. So that's very important, um, uh, to at least be able to know which version you're on, because that will also help you as you're determining what to type into that command. Also tried in a couple of the other counts, which was BSN and BE count. I didn't get anything coming back from those. I did BE stat and it obviously came back and gave me that power off state. So it's kind of neat. This is that, you know, from this uh, application, you could do things, you know, such as be able to start or to stop your console via the command line. <laughs> so pretty cool. Um, I think I was just playing around with some of the boot beats uh, here, just like turning them on. So. Uh, you could check things such as does your console beep, um, you know, all the troubleshooting and diagnostics uh, type of tools uh, are available in here. Um, you can clear the error log, E-R-R-L-O-G clear, and that removes uh, whatever you currently have. And then there is this other one here that is all about the error log start so if we do this you can see that right now the error log is clear it's just got these elves in there and if we did something like unplug the power cable uh, and then run that error log again you can see here this is saying hey there's a power sequence um, there is a fatal down start um, and the error here is this 3001, which means that that console did not have power uh, to it. So you can, get, uh, you can get these diagnostic codes pretty easily. So there I ran it again, same command, and I got another 3001. So it's kind of neat to be able to interactively get these type of error messages and to be able to uh, understand what they are and what they're doing. Well, I believe that is going to be it for the day today. So make sure you check out the hardware uh, video as well as use this software uh, guide in order to set up PS3 Syscon. I think it's going to make a big difference for folks that are troubleshooting some of these hard to understand uh, error codes and also prevent them from wasting a whole bunch of time trying to learn maybe remove parts and add parts or try different things. I know I've done a ton of that in the past. Um, now, more than likely, I'll just be using uh, Syscon, especially for stuff that takes me more than, you know, maybe 20, 20 minutes or so to after opening a console to diagnose. Um, there is, the again, those couple of solder points that you've got to do in there. But um, other than that, it's pretty easy to get up and started. So thank you so very much for hanging out with me here today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.